Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I'm going to do um, plants that I regret buying, plants that I was really on the fence about but turned out I loved them. Uh, oh, I ended up loving. And then one which oscillates wildly back and forth depending on how it's behaving. Uh, are you listening? Uh, so right, plants I, forget, I regret buying. Um, I'm just going to put Calathea. I love Calathea, I think they're stunning. They're like medium to care for, I don't think they're particularly difficult, it varies from plant to plant, but they... I bought small ones, they don't grow very quickly, they don't in my house, and they really look great when they're like big lush plants, and none of mine are, and whenever they look like they're getting like a growth spurt, they get some sort of pest or something happens to them. Um, or they need repotting and then they go all sad and stop growing and I think they're a plant that now if somebody said to me that they wanted it really wanted Calathea I would highly recommend spending more money and getting a bigger specimen I just don't have the I'm the kind of person that I really struggle to spend a lot of money on something if I can get a cheaper one uh, so I would just get a smaller one and then complain about it forever rather than just biting the bullet and buying a big one and now I don't really have the I've got so many plants like I bought a lot of Calathea when I first got into plants and I wish I bought bigger ones then but now I've just not got the space and I would rather have like something like this varicosum which varicosums aren't an easier they're not particularly they're not difficult to care for but they're not one of the easier philodendrons but they look really cool but um, they're less picky than Calathea about things like water quality. So in terms of convenience, they're more convenient <laughs> uh, for me, which is really important to me. I, I don't care if something needs watering every day. I will happily water every day, as long as I don't have to do anything special. Like, it, whereas this thing I can just water from, directly from the bathroom tap. So um, yeah, but this is all like when you, when you get into plants you're so excited about all the possibilities and buying the ones that you saw on youtube that you don't really not that you don't care you don't know what you like what your style is and when you first start you spend a lot of time looking after your plants but over time naturally you're you sort of as you become, as you become more comfortable with a hobby you become less of a helicopter parent depending on you know the type of person that you are so if you're a beginner getting into calathea I would buy bigger specimens, specimens, <laughs> specimens, they look better, I think they're more resilient and I just think they're better, like if I get a thrips infestation on like my um, uh, Calathea Network, the Mosaica one, the one that looks, cool. I don't actually think mine's got any leaves on it at the moment. So this thing always gets thrips, so currently we've got two leaves. <laughs> which are looking really sad. I think it's dry. No, it's not. Anyway. It gets thrips all the time. Uh, normally we get up to about 10 decent sized leaves. It gets thrips. All the leaves look like crap. So I have to cut them back and we start again. And I can't get it to the point where it's big enough. And I don't like it enough to spend the money on a big one. I'm going to need a purge at some point, aren't I? What I might do, what I'm really considering doing, is getting a really big pot uh, and put, potting all my calothea together. I've got lots of tiny ones like that. So I've got like a beauty star, rattlesnake. I think I've got a five or six tiny calotheas, which are basically just a load of roots and like one leaf. So I think I might pot them all up together because I want to. And I think it would look really cool. It would, it would at least look like a bigger plant than like loads of small crappy ones. Other plants I regret buying are random green epipremnums. <laughs> I don't know why I have... So you can see them all up there. Where's my finger? That's terrifying. So you can see them all here. They're all like around there somewhere. Uh, and there's like three or four. And then I've got similarly a some sort of monstera here. Now apparently this monstera uh, if I give it more light, we'll get fenestrations. I find it weird that it could have got to the size it is. It's massive. It's got a lot of leaves um, without a lot of light. And it's not leggy, like... 
I, I think it was mislabeled as probably a green epipramnum but I don't like they're, they're easy to care for pretty much but they all look the same and I don't know why I've got them this is just a, a case of seeing something and then just buying it without planning which is a trap that a lot of us fall into when we first get into the hobby but I was old enough to know better then I don't know if I, if I went through a phase of they all just look like green leaf plants one of them has quite long leaves but they're not I just feel like they're taking the valuable space and yes I feel rude saying it to them whilst they're there but in general I try not to regret buying plants if I really regret buying them I put them outside and um so one was I've got a massive massive aloe vera and she's big and she's spiky and my house is not big and she spikes us all the time so I put her outside hoping to kill her off uh, but she didn't die um <laughs> she's thriving actually when I went outside to check that she was dead in winter she not only hadn't died she'd had several babies and I didn't want to kill a mother that just seemed rude so I brought her in for the winter then she went out this summer got burnt to a crisp and then started growing like mad again so she'll be coming back in again in winter oh that's another um genus I regret buying cacti I love cacti they're really cool but they're spiky and if you have a small house they spike you and it hurts and you can't I once moved one using oven mitts and I had to throw out the oven mitts because they got cactus spines in them and would spike us the spikes are there for a reason like they're a deterrent and they are a real deterrent uh, repotting them is a nightmare I have one that's five foot tall that just I don't have enough light for it it's really leggy but I can't do anything with it I can't chuck it it's really old it's about 15 years old I couldn't move it. Moving house with it was a nightmare. It's got really long, thick spines that, you know, want to kill you. So it just lives in a bright-ish spot in my kitchen and exists. Quite sad, really. All my other cat died went to live with my boyfriend at work. Um, because he didn't want me to throw them out. Because I suppose they were his. But they didn't get the light, so they didn't grow very well. I put one out one summer and it bloomed and it looked stunning. And then when I didn't do that the year after, it didn't bloom and I was like, oh, it knows, it knows last year it had it better. So they're now in a really bright window at my boyfriend's work and they're fine. But yeah, just think practically when you buy plants, because when you see big cactuses, cacti, they do look really cool, but they are spiky. So just beware of that. Uh, plants that I bought, usually because of peer pressure, and then ended up loving. Now top of the list is this one, which is my Trubii Midnight. Is that what it's called? I think so. It's a skin dapsis, so it grows like a weed. I say it grows like a weed. This thing does grow like a weed. It's Pothos. Sometimes they grow and sometimes they don't. It's not, they're not, a plant that's easy to grow universally but this one I don't know wherever I put it it grows and it grows it's always grow it grows throughout winter I've got a new leaf coming here uh, it doesn't care where I put it I think there's several in here actually but it just grows really nicely it all the leaves there are a few ratty ones here that have been attacked but I don't know it I think it's the thickness of the leaves it doesn't get shrivelly it doesn't get brown marks on the, on it I just really like it it's a new one a little new one and i well it's, it's, right so this was 24.99 um reduced to 9.99 which is probably why i bought it but i just think i i think when i bought this the fever for them hadn't really kicked in yet and i think people thought it was too expensive but i saw it and i'd never seen one in this country before so i snapped it up especially since it was reduced but I just think they're really cool and they're not they're not underrated because they're massively actually overhyped but they are a plant that I think is really good for beginners they won't die as soon as you look at them they will take a little bit of overwatering will take a lot of underwatering I can't even remember the last time I watered it and it's not dry it is quite dry <laughs> but it's not like no it's quite dry but you wouldn't know, like it's not complaining, it's got a new leaf growing. You can go in, there's some water down here. You can go in there, love. Okay. 
and I think because of the growth pattern it grows oh the light went weird it's gone like green um the internodal spacing is very small so it grows quite bushy whereas and it mine doesn't get a lot of light it's on like a lower light down there somewhere which looks quite bright but isn't particular it's not particularly it's fine but it's not it's like medium to bright and direct just I think it's just a natural growth pattern it grows quite bushy whereas a lot of other pothos especially if you don't give them the light they get massively leggy like this one um so it's a really good one and they are they're not rare I don't think they're like rare in the hobby but they don't they just don't turn up very often and I think they're quite popular so they go quickly but I would highly recommend them if you see them another plant that I got wasn't that fussed about but ended up loving was I can't get it because it's in the terrarium is aglaenema I've got an aglaenema over there which I do love but I'm not moving it there's stuff in the way uh aglaenema are like what calathea could be they're like an easier calathea um they are as brightly they're, in fact, they're more brightly colored like more brightly colored the one in the terrarium is pretty much all bright pink and she looks incredible um i've actually got a so i bought a diamond bay years ago and all the leaves dropped off so i propped it it didn't really take so i tried it in the arrow garden and it's recently started growing but all white leaves like 100 percent variegated which <laughs> i don't really know what to do with it it wouldn't survive outside of the arrow garden i don't think because it wouldn't be the light to sustain it i don't know how it's sustaining itself at the moment uh, every time it gets a new leaf, the old one just browns off and dies. So I think I'm waiting for it to pick up some um, green, but I don't know if it can. I'm just seeing what happens, really. But actually, Nima are just, they don't mind if they dry out. They don't really care if they get folded water. And they're really pretty and colourful. And I think they're just better than Aglaen than Calathea. Not better, but, you know, they're just easier. And they seem less resist they seem more resistant to pests. Yes. Calathea kind of give up the ghost when they get pests. They're a bit like a um, 17th century woman with consumption, just like, oh, no, it's all too much. So, yeah, I, it's, uh, I feel bad dissing Calathea. I'm not dissing them. I do love them, but they don't grow fast enough and they die too quickly. Right, now we are on to the plant that I hate, love, then I hate it. I, ha I hated it for a long time, and uh, it's recently started making a recovery. And it is this Neon Pothos. Now, I always used to say, if you like this colour of plant and this sort of general style of plant, stay away from this and get a Philodendron Lemon Lime, because my Philodendron Lemon Lime grew beautifully until recently or well, now it looks like crap and I don't know what's changed nothing's changed nothing has changed it's the same it's just decided I'll get it it doesn't look bad or it does it used to be really full and bushy and now it's just vining <laughs> and I don't, know, I don't know it never used to do this it lived for couple of years like big full bushy plant and just really chill and cool and now it's uh, oh it's water I thought that was mold but it's water um don't ask me how I got those confused but right so I got that so philodendron lemon lime used to be quite difficult to get hold of here they're not expensive but they just don't seem to come in very often unlike neon pothos which you can get anywhere this neon pothos gave me a lot of trouble it just died every leaf it had just rotted the roots kept dying that was that's the issue the roots kept dying so I used to have to keep taking it out of the soil and keeping it in water and you might say why not just keep it in water I would keep it in Lekka now but I didn't know about Lekka then but it would only live for a few weeks in water before it would just take a massive nosedive and it would go back into soil and then it would perk up again and then the cycle would just keep repeating it was almost like it wanted two weeks in soil two weeks in water two weeks in soil two I don't have the energy for that I mean this these things are cheap as chips it'd be better if I just kept buying a new one this out this went on for about six months and I just pandered to its every whim 
I'm trying to get the roots to stay in the soil, but they will not. <laughs> As it just does it. Um, it it was just, and I didn't know what it wanted from me. Something different. I might put it in Lego actually. Um, so I one day it just started to grow. Uh, nothing changed. It was actually in a slightly lower light environment. It was never in particularly bright light. It was in like bright indirect light, pretty good light. Uh, and I moved it to a darker spot and it just started to grow. And it looks, this is the healthiest it's ever looked. And as it got healthier and started to look not shit, this thing took a nosedive. It's like we can't have one without the other. What's that from? It's like Harry and Voldemort. One can't live while the other survives. Something like just We can't have both. We can have one or the other. And I, I don't understand why. I love both. Like I love and hate both equally. <laughs> I just hate that uh, I wrote in so many blog posts like these, these are a pain. Get one of those. Now I'm like hmm. It really depends. So if anybody has the same issue or not the issue or knows anything about why this thing has such finicky roots, please let me know. It might just be some plants have finicky roots. Thai constellations have much have much more finicky roots. Their roots are far more prone to root rot than Monstera deliciosa for reasons that nobody really knows other than that's just how they are, which is helpful to no one. I think if I was to go back and start my collection again, I would make an actual list of the plants that I wanted and stick to it. As I'm saying that, I'm like, no, you wouldn't. That's not what, it's not what human nature's like. It's like those people that complain that when they were at school, they never, they were never, never taught about money. They probably were. It's just when you're at school, you don't care. Slash remember. Yeah, but the, the problem is we get, you get so overexcited when you start getting into plants, when you see one that you've not seen before, that you just end up buying a ton. But a more cre a more curated collection is definitely the way to go. But obviously, like, we're not like that. Uh, whilst I'm here, um, I'm gonna get out the roots for my Florida green that I propped in Lekka. Have I propped it? We don't know yet. I'll, I'll get it. Well, the answer to that is no. I was, of, I was I was really sure this thing would have grown roots, but uh, it's just rotted. Got a bit of rot there. The this leaf. So when you take a cutting and the, so this leaf was halfway unfurled. Just unfurl it there. Um, it, the plant aborted it, it didn't have the energy. It needed to either grow roots or grow this leaf and this leaf would be no, no use without roots. So it grew roots or it should have, but it hasn't. So what I think I might do is just to make everything a little bit easier because this thing's it's too spindly um it's from that plant there which does not get enough light uh, and it's what am i pointing what am i even pointing at yeah it is that one <laughs> um yeah i need to just chop it off here and try and prop this bit and just say bye to this i could try both i suppose but this rots a bit close to the node I do have a Florida green cutting somewhere. I think it's in the fish tank, but because, uh, but I think I know which one it is. But when plants start to grow new leaves, if it doesn't have one of the original leaves, it can be quite hard to tell what it is because it often takes them a few goes to get the right leaf shape. <laughs> the first leaves they grow are generally just like whatever random shape they do. Um, where's my scissors? There. So, um, yeah, you can't always depend on leaf shape to work out what a plant is. So I don't have room for another one of these, especially if it's going to grow as leggy as its mother. But we're going anyway. Propagating in Lekka is, um, I find, much easier than propping in water. Not easier, but more, you get a higher success rate. But it's a pain to keep the plants in because there's nothing to hold them in the, apart from the lecker which is really lightweight there's nothing to hold them in i recently did an article on growing plants in perlite uh, so you can grow plants in perlite like you do lecker like in almost exactly the same way 
but the issue is it's so light you can't keep them up right they just fall over all the time and it's frustrating <laughs> if anybody has any ideas and ways to keep them upright that's going to be better isn't it the, tra the chances of this leaf doing anything are minimal it will probably just shrivel up and die um, if this node doesn't take we have got another one here this one seems quite active it's got what looks to be a auxiliary bud and three aerial roots i think they all have three aerial roots um so we shall just have to see so these things grow leaves in a really amazing way um this thing the petiole no it's not the petiole this is the caterpillar when it opens it will spill out a whole leaf and the petiole it won't be this long it'll obviously grow bigger over time um, but they're like the fuzzy bit because the petioles are quite fuzzy on these but it is amazing to watch and it literally happens it, they literally open like poof, but they tend to do it at night I've never caught it doing it but literally one night you'll have like a full petiole and then you get up the next morning and there's just a leaf I mean it's not unfurled yet but it's like the caterpillars just opened it is quite amazing and I would stay up and watch it but I uh, need my sleep all right you can go back over there I think that's all I've got to talk about today. I know it's a bit all over the place, but that's currently how I'm feeling. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.